So I didn't really grow up in church. I mean, we were Christers, Christmas and Easter. That's that's what we did. And so I kind of fell out of it. I, I felt my mind is more scientific. I, I felt that the Old Testament was preposterous. I mean, I actually, you know, picked on people growing up. You know, we, we called this group of youth the God Squad. And for my whole life, I struggled with what was going on. I knew that Jesus was the most important person in the world. I mean, he changed the calendar. Let's face facts. He changed the calendar. And what he did was amazing. You know, feeding the hungry and curing the blind and the sick and the disabled. And he was just amazing. But who knew? I, I didn't know. Is he the Messiah or was he just an amazing doctor? That he knew stuff that other people didn't know. And was it all like parable? The blind man to see. Was that really that or did he tell him some information that, whoa, now I get it. So I, I didn't know. And it wasn't until I said, Jesus saved me, that I saw a whole new world. So one community group I'm sitting in. And we're going through the book of Isaiah. And all of a sudden I hear, and he will be pierced for our transgression. Because I grew up, you know, watching the Easter stories and everything else. And seeing the pierce on the side. So when I heard he will be pierced for our transgressions, I was just like, uh, wait a minute. The rude biochemist in the room, interrupting everybody. Wait a minute. When was this written? 650 years before his birth. And it was like a bucket of cold water just went on my face. And this has nothing to do with me being smart. This has nothing to do with me actually going, oh, wow, yeah, you guys are smart. It was when the Lord wanted to lift the scales from my eyes. Look, I didn't come to faith until I was in my 30s. So I had a, you know, I had a life that was steamed in what wasn't really Christian principles. But now, knowing what I know, and it isn't all parables, and it all leads to him, I feel confident that I can be a steward of my boys. And that I've given them over Gorman to grow. And that it's like I'm giving them to him. Because he is their father. He is the one that's there. When they were growing up, I constantly told them, I'm going to fail you every day. But you have a heavenly father that if you pray to him, he will be there forever. And he will never let you down. It has been fantastic that I found him and that he actually why would he want me? I was a hot mess. I, I was his enemy. I was someone that mocked the people that believed him and believed in him. And I was just a doubting Thomas. And now I don't need to see the holes and I don't need to see the pierce on the side. I know him. I love him. I want a relationship with him, even though my flesh tells me to run away from him. And I appreciate the struggle because... It's one of those things that ensures me that I'll have eternal life with him. Even though I'm scared that I won't, but I know he's there. He will knock down every door. He will move every mountain just for me. And who does that? Who leaves heaven? Who takes the most brutal death imaginable for people that never loved him? I can never do that. I can never sacrifice my sons for the world. I can never imagine being disowned by my family, with them turning their backs on me. And he did that. He did that all. So we would be beautiful. We could have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And the Father did that. Something that I would never do. I would never leave heaven. I would never sacrifice my sons. And that's why he is God.